Today we're gonna jump up in the pattern. I'm going to show you five landing mistakes and how to fix them. So let's get going. gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop, seatbelt switches. All right, so on this first one, we are going to go through just all the normal stuff. I want to talk about the correct way to do things, at least from a holistic perspective, and then we're going to break it down situation by situation. So first off, I've just completed what is called the uh, Sea Gumps checklist. That sets me all up for landing. It gets me ready to go. Basically, it's a memory item checklist that gets the airplane set up. I'm nice and trimmed. I'm at my traffic pattern altitude. I'm at a good distance from the runway. That's the first thing we're gonna talk about after this uh, complete landing is your distance from the runway. So keep that in mind. And I'm compensating for that with the wind as I'm thinking about things here. It looks like I have to ha uh, point a little bit away because I do have a right crosswind right now. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Again, I'm all set up. Everything's comfortable and slow. And now I'm looking for that turn. Homer traffic, two, three, and form. Downwind to base, runway two, two, Homer. Okay, I'm pulling that power back. I'm adding some back pressure because I want to lose my airspeed and energy. I'm going to add my second notch of flaps. I'm looking now to the final before I get there. And I need to anticipate when to make that turn on the final so that I roll right onto center line when I do so. That's going to be another thing we talk about. Got some wind out here. But I'm just going to gingerly come back over and correct for that so that we get on final. Interesting little burbles right there in an interesting spot. That's gonna bring up a good conversation for us. And now I'm dialing in my airspeed and energy. I'm eyeballing my uh, airspeed to begin with and then I'm looking a lot more outside of the airplane at my landing target. So now I'm keeping my eyes outside for the most part and everything's looking pretty nice here. I'm just gonna bring it on down nice and comfortable do have a little bit of a left crosswind, not too much. And I'll settle on in. Then I want to finish with my turn of aileron into the wind. And that is finishing the job, staying on center line. So we're going to bring all that together now. Let's get back up in the air. So the first point I'm going to show you is wide traffic patterns. In other words, we don't want to do wide traffic patterns. So I just turned on to the crosswind now. I'm still climbing to my traffic pattern altitude. I'm going to keep my traffic pattern altitude because that's going to that's going to drive the point home. But I'm going to fly out further than I usually would and show you why I don't like being clear out here. I know this is actually a fairly bad habit with a lot of pilots. For some reason, they just fly way too far away from the runway. I think it's a lack of discipline on energy management. I mean, I'm having a hard time right now just <laughs> holding myself back from going that far out. So it's a lack of discipline with energy management. And what I mean by that is if you do fly close to the runway, it just means that your your approach might be a little bit more power off. So here I'm out uh, probably about a mile from the runway, maybe three quarters of a mile. I just think that it's a, it's a little bit too far out for where we want to be. So if we were to have an issue right here, we might be able to make the runway, especially today since we have that wind. But the whole point of being closer is that if you lose your engine, you're gonna be able to make the runway. If you're working in the pattern, or you're even approaching the pattern from somewhere else, it just gives you the opportunity to make the runway better. All right, now I'm gonna show you uh, how I would usually stay my oh, safe distance from the pattern. So, I turn crosswind, and then I essentially look for traffic, so I'll look out there, make sure no one's on downwind, and then I'll make my turn pretty quickly. So I want to be about a half mile away from the runway, instead of a mile or two mile. Some people really fly far away, and I'm just going to stay nice and close. And today, again, there's a little bit of wind that is pushing us toward the runway based on this particular pattern, so I'm watching out for that. 
and I will compensate correctly. So not only is it about setting your distance that you want, but it's also about flying that distance. So right now my nose is headed more toward that direction. Usually I think it'd be headed maybe five, 10 degrees to the left, okay? So that's what you need to do because right now I could make the runway in so many different places and it just keeps me at a nice safe distance where if anything were to go wrong, I can already make the runway. So I, I definitely recommend staying a little bit tighter and that'll be better for you. Okay, this next thing I'm going to show you is also another common problem, and that is overshooting the final. This is something that I see a lot of pilots doing because they, uh, they're they coming in too fast, they get distracted, and this is uh, one of those things that the FAA is really on top of people right now is that base the final turn. And typically it happens because someone comes in and they overshoot that nice long final that they want and, uh, and they, they essentially try to turn back too quick, maybe even kick in their rudder. But I'm just going to do too shallow of a bank here. You're going to see I get pulled out way too far away from the runway, okay? Now, I could crank it over, right, and try to get over there, but that's not the correct way to do it. Just come on back. Or even better, do a go-around. A go-around, an unstable approach would be a good idea right now. So think of that. All right, now I'm going to show you uh, how to correctly roll out on that final. So we've got the wind at our back. It is pushing us. That means we have a higher ground speed. That means we need to turn sooner. So I'm going to actually start my turn now to smoothly get into that final. Because right around here, I've noticed on my other approaches, I get in a little mixing bowl. Now that was a nice shallow turn into that final. That one worked pretty well. Um, you could make it a slightly tighter turn and that could work out well too. But again, if you overshoot, don't just try to turn back really quick, especially don't load the wing. You gotta stay right on target. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to land too fast. Now some would say, well hey, uh, airspeed is life. Why would too much airspeed be a problem when landing? And the reason why is you'll float a really long time the wind and everything can act upon the airplane for a longer time during that process, and your landing roll will just be a lot longer than it should have been. So I am set up all right here. I'm a little high, but say that's my problem, right? And I just aim for a target, and I'm just going to nose down this airplane, and I'm going to get there, because that's my airspeed, and I want it. And I don't pay attention to that. This becomes an even bigger issue, and we're dealing with the short field or something of that nature. Okay. Radio, Truckee 6 and company, if you have no reported traffic, we will be on the runway from Alpha. Truckee 6 on the radio, there is traffic, one Cessna close, traffic runway 22 and another one inbound. Traffic, Cessna 758. And here's our too much power, we're just floating and floating and floating and floating and floating and floating and floating. You see how much energy is left in the plane? So this time I'm going to show you what it's like to not use rudder. So this is going to be weird for me. I'm going to have my feet kind of hovering over the rudder. I'm going to show you what it's like to not use rudder while you're landing, especially on a gusty day like today. It's going to be quite interesting. So check it out. It'll get a little wonky. But you need to be active, like the, the rudder is what is keeping our nose centered, okay? So if I'm not using it, I'm not truly pointing the airplane where I want it to go while landing. Yeah, I can use aileron, but that's kind of mushy. We're going to be doing this the whole time. Kind of some Dutch roll-ish yaw. It's so hard not to use the rudder. Okay, and you can see probably from that nose view that we're just getting whipped around every which way. And I really have to be overly active with the ailerons to get where I want to go. So hard not to use the rudder. And then here, I mean, I just landed, kind of side-loaded a little bit because I wasn't using them, okay? You have to use little bits of rudder here and there while you're landing. So now I'm going to show you that approach at that perfect airspeed and also that rudder usage. So I'm going to be on the rudders now. It's just, you know, a little jab, a little movement here and there to keep things nice and aligned, or at least from preventing the nose from just flopping around wherever it wants. And I'm going to be more on my airspeed than I was before, okay? 
So we're coming on down. Things are looking good. Radio I still have a little one. energy I can bleed Three. off. About Getting a little bit of an updraft, so it kind of makes things interesting. And we're just fighting for what we want, okay? Fighting for what we want to be right on center line when we touch down. Okay, so that's challenging. There's lots of wind going on right now. It kind of spills over these trees and over these hills and things. So it makes things pretty interesting. I'm going to show you what happens when you don't finish the job, okay? Coming down, coming into our landing attitude here, pulling that power out. I'm going to stay off the rudders and the ailerons. And look what happens. We start to come off to the side. So we really should be turning into the wind and using our rudders to stay on center line. Maybe we need, even need to brake a little bit and stop. There are a handful of different things you need to do to finish the job after you've made that nice landing. So let me show you finishing the job now. So I'm coming down here, I'm about to land. And there is that wind. So I want to keep my crosswind controls in. And I want to use whatever rudder I need, whatever nose wheel steering I need to stay on center line, okay? So you notice how deflected the ailerons are? That's because I have that wind. That's because that's what it feels like I need to keep myself from skidding right now. Now I'm going to show you everything coming all together. I'm uh, right here close to the runway where I like to be for my landings and my approaches and my pattern work so that I can make the runway if everything, if anything were to ever go wrong. So I feel comfortable there, all right? And I am compensating for the wind again, so I stay within a certain distance. I've got a friendly pilot out here that is number two. Done my landing checklist. Everything looks good, nice and set up. The more set up you get, the more you can think about how you're gonna um, deal with the winds and how you're gonna turn into the runway and how you're going to be on speed. All of these things, mentally prepare yourself by slowing down if you need to. Homer traffic, 2-3 to 4, let base, 2-2, two, two, Homer. Hey, drawing back that power. I am adding a bit of back pressure here because I want to lose airspeed. I'm gonna add my second notch of flaps. I'm gonna check my final approach. Basically power idle at that this point. I feel like I need to because I'm getting pushed into the runway. All right, now I'm going to make sure that I move into that final approach. So I'm going to keep it a little more more shallow today just because I know that wind has been an issue. That looks nice. We're rolling off on center line for the most part. Okay. Our speed is bleeding down. I'm crabbing into the wind a little bit. I've got my sight picture all nice. I'm about 70 miles per hour where I want to be. I'm using the rudder when I need to. Small corrections. Nice and smooth. Application of power to get back to my my uh, landing location. Okay. Everything's just nice and smooth. Setting it up smooth. Might get a little bit more active in here. And draw back that power. Aileron to the wind. A little bit of a crosswind. And see, we're out of energy and we can stop earlier because we were on, air, on our airspeed the whole time. Or at least on energy. However you want to phrase it. And we finish, okay? I finish by uh, putting up the flaps and turning my aileron into the wind. Because of this pilot behind me, I am going to pull off onto the elephant ear. All right, I hope you guys learned something on that flight today. A bit busy for me to do a bunch of pattern work and teach, but went well. A little more bumpy than I thought it was, but it just makes those things that we learn even more important. So again, we talked about being far enough away from the uh, the runway on the downwind that you can make it back to the runway if something were to go wrong. We talked about that base to final turn and if you overshoot that you make sure that you're just nice and smooth getting back. You're not doing anything crazy to get back on center line and you're really not doing anything crazy in that area anyway. We talked about being on speed and, and so you can stay on target essentially as you're coming down that final approach. With that part two, also making sure that you're using your rudder to um, stay aligned and everything so you're not just wobbling all over the place. And, uh, and then we saw into the flare and touchdown and finishing after that, that if you aren't on speed and you don't use that rudder, that all that part becomes more and more difficult, okay?
And then of course, finishing the job. Just because your wheels have touched down doesn't mean you're done flying. You need to put those ailerons into the wind, stay on that center line with your steering, and, uh, and do whatever else you need to do to stop. Um, depending on the airport you're at, depending on what you're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Got lots of great stuff coming for you guys. And uh, yeah, hope to talk to you soon. Until next time, throttle on.